Let me share the investment journey of two investors with you. One investor A who's put his money, 100% of it into an equity fund. For simplicity's sake, let's take it's an index fund. And investor B who's put about 70% of his money in an equity fund and 30% into a debt fund, right? And five, six, seven years down the line, if I ask you, who do you think would have made more money? Your answer is going to be very obvious. It's going to be investor A, right? He was invested 100% into equities. He was taking more risk and therefore he should be getting more returns. What if I told you it was actually investor B who has made more money than investor A over the last seven years? Let's find out how. My name is Harshwardhan and I'm from Wealth Cafe where we share with you ideas to help you make smart investing decisions. Let me get this conversation started by sharing some real performance numbers with you. Investor A put 100% of his money in the HDFC index plan which is a Nifty 50 plan and over the last 7 years he's earned a CAGR of 13.66%. Well, as investor B chose the same fund house but chose a different fund, he put his money in the HDFC Balance Advantage Fund and over the last 7 years, he's earned a return of 13.93%. Well, an index fund would be investing 100% of the money into equities whereas the Balance Advantage Fund is putting a minimum of 65% of the money in equity and the balance is debt and on an average, it would have 70-75% to 75 over the last 7 years in equity and the rest of it in debt investment. You can see that he's actually had a lower allocation to equity, but at the end of the seven year period, he's landing up with a return, which is higher than the return from a 100% exposure to equity. So how is that possible? Well, the answer to this question is what you get when you do asset allocation and you let the magic of asset allocation work for your portfolio. Well, what exactly is asset allocation? Asset allocation is basically deciding how much of your money should be in a particular asset class at any point in time. So how much of it should be allocated to debt? How much should be allocated to equity? How much should be maybe allocated to gold or even real estate if you are an advanced investor? Asset allocation is the process that helps you determine your allocation to these various asset classes. Now, why is this important? This is important because studies have shown that 90% of your returns as an investor are derived from the fact that you are invested in a particular asset class at a particular point in time rather than being derived from which particular stock you owned. For example, whether you are invested at a particular point in time in equity or debt, that determines 90% of your returns and the balance 10% is determined from whether you've invested in the stock of HDFC Bank or maybe ICICI Bank. While studies clearly show the importance of asset allocation, we don't see that in action when we look at an investor's portfolio. In the example that we've been talking about, investor A just put his money in equity and left it there, whereas investor B put his money in a fund which does asset allocation, which tracks a lot of criteria, be it the market capitalization, be it the PE ratio, be it the uh, EPS of the companies. There are a number of factors which are tracked by fund managers before they determine whether the markets are expensive or cheap and as a result, how much should they invest in equity, how much they must invest in debt. The logic being that when equity is expensive, you invest less in equity. When equity is cheap, you increase the allocation to equity. So SDFC Balance Fund, in the example we've taken, has managed to move the allocation between debt and equity and over the seven year period resulted in a return which is actually more than a pure equity fund. Well, I'm not recommending any of the funds here. I just picked up the examples of the funds to make a point saying that asset allocation works and asset allocation is something you must do for your portfolio. Why? Because it will help you achieve two things. One, for the same returns, it will help you minimize the risk as an investor or for a particular amount of risk you are willing to take, it will help you maximize the returns. Either ways, asset allocation helps you optimize your portfolio for the returns that you get versus the risk that you're taking. If you have any questions about asset allocation or how you can make it work for your portfolio, do leave your questions in the comment section below.